week two in the NFL was quite a week. Uh, and, and not quite the week that we want to have in the NFL. A lot of guys got hurt. And as a Giants fan, obviously, I'm hurting a lot more than a lot of fan bases are. Sands, the San Francisco 49ers, of course. Uh, they're dealing with it just a little bit worse than I think anybody in the league. But we've got football to play. It's week three. The show, the show must go on, as they say. So the Thursday night game is the Miami Dolphins at 0-2 versus the Jacksonville Jaguars at 1-1. The Jags are going to be without their number one wide receiver, DJ Chark. He's dealing with a chest back injury. So that leaves Gardner Minshew with a short staff on offense going up against uh, what really is a pretty well-rounded team in Miami. Um, I, I've been saying this for a while now. They're a lot better, I think, talent-wise than people are going to give them credit for just because of their record. And this, this is pretty unfair. I think that, uh, you know, if we if when we get to Tua time, it's going to change a lot of things in Miami. I don't think Tua is ready, but it's going to be Tannehill tonight. Um, it's not, like I said, it's not quite to a time, but, uh, tonight I'm going to give it to the Jags. I just don't think that, uh, I just, I just don't think that Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to be able to get the job done. You know, it, it's, it's tough because we don't know ever what kind of Ryan Fitzpatrick we're going to see on any given night. Is it going to be Fitz magic or Fitz tragic? So I've got, uh, I've got Jacksonville on Thursday. And then 1 p.m. on Sunday, we're going to kick it off with my game, the San Francisco 49ers at 1-1, one one, joining the New York Giants in a clash, and the Niners playing their second straight game at MetLife Stadium. They picked up the win against the Jets on Sunday, and in that game, as was previously mentioned, they lost a whole bunch of talent, lost a lot of guys, they lost Solomon Thomas. They lost Nick Bosa, both out with left ACL tears, and they lost Jimmy Garoppolo for a couple of weeks with a high ankle sprain. And they're facing the New York Giants, who lost Saquon Barkley to an ACL tear, but the Giants have picked up Devontae Freeman in the meantime. So, it's the law of diminishing returns, because once you, once you are without Saquon Barkley in New York, it's kind of everybody's... You can't... You can't ever replace that. You can't fill that hole. So it's it's going to be tough for New York to to figure out exactly what they need to do to get the chains moving uh, on offense. The passing game is fine. I mean, Daniel Jones has looked sharp, irregardless of what people are going to be saying about the turnovers. Yeah, he's turned the ball over a couple times. But when we look at the, the game film and the tape, he has been playing some phenomenal football with some less than phenomenal talent around him. And I think that that shouldn't go so understated. Daniel Jones is playing really good football. And he's been throwing a lot of, a lot of yards. And, and he's got some touchdowns under his name. And, and the, the, the Giants defense pitched a, pitched a shutout in the second half last week against Chicago. It's just the whole team has to come together and participate in, 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 in a team effort in order to start getting some wins. And really the only challenge they have to face this Sunday against San Francisco is going to be um, the running back there, the, the, old, the old Vikings guy, Jarek McKinnon. Uh, it's just Jarek McKinnon who they've got to worry about because Coleman and Mostert are both out. So, the injuries piling up for San Francisco, they've got the odds stacked against them in a major way to get back to the Super Bowl at this point. They're 1-1. One one. They're now without their two best defensive linemen. And, of course, they shipped DeForest Buckner away in the offseason, or they let him walk, rather. And now they're without their quarterback, and they're starting two running backs. And they're facing a Giants team that is, knock on wood maintained relative health outside of Saquon Barkley and Sterling Shepard going down last week. So it's we're really going to see what what both of these teams are made of. Are the Giants 
as bad as advertised? Are 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 the 49ers as good as advertised but just injured at the moment and and even while injured the rest of the talent that was in the Super Bowl can still uh can still hold the water, you know, and 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 stay afloat. It's it's a tough game. It's a tough matchup. And the Niners are they jumped so quick to blame MetLife Stadium's brand new turf, which is ridiculous because this is the same San Francisco 49ers organization that plays at Levi Stadium, and Levi Stadium got blasted for how their field was during a Super Bowl, and nobody complained about MetLife Stadium's turf during the Super Bowl, so I, I guess I guess there's just a lot of, a lot of negativity surrounding the 49ers organization this week. But I've got to, for the third straight week, pick the New York Giants. Not be, And this one isn't even because I'm a Giants fan. This one is solely because the Niners are so banged up and they're so hurt right now that the Giants have no choice other than to win or be sentenced to hell. And I will be the one to christen them into the Crimson Gates by myself. I, I will I will go down there and I will welcome each man on that 53-man roster into the gates of hell if they lose to San Francisco on Sunday. It, it, it will not be pretty. I will not be a very happy camper come next weekend if, if the Giants lose. Then we have the LA Rams at 2-0 and the Buffalo Bills at 2-0. The Rams are 3-13 versus the AFC East since 2002. That is the worst against any division. That is bad. And they have a uphill battle to climb. So the Rams looked all right in week one beating the Cowboys. And then they looked pretty dominant beating Philadelphia last week. But then you got to look at the talent. Or you, you got to look at the competition that you're facing. And... Frankly, I don't think that the uh, I don't think that the Rams are much of anything. I, I think that they uh, they're going to finish with a decent record. They'll probably sneak in in the in the wild card round against the number two seed because yeah, that's a thing this year, guys. Let's not forget uh, playoffs are changing. Yeah, so I think the Rams will they'll sneak into the playoffs, and I don't think they're going to make much noise. They're probably christened for a first round. Uh, a first round exit at this point they're probably preparing for a first round exit not that you prepare for that but I mean yeah, you, you get what I mean they're probably en route to a first round exit Buffalo however they've got higher aspirations I reckon uh, excuse me I reckon we'll see them in the divisional round at the very latest or at the very I think that they will at least make it to the divisional round. Let's stop trying to be fancy with the word play and just get my thoughts out. <laughs> so I th I'm going to take their bills in this game. I think they're just top to bottom, better roster, better quarterback, better running back, better receivers, uh, better defense. They got Aaron Donald. What more is there to say about that defense? Oh, wait, I'm talking about the Rams now with Aaron Donald. That was an astute miscalculation. The Bills are better at every position except for defensive tackle because nobody in the league is better than the Rams at that position. But the Bills don't have a defense to sleep on. I'm going to pick them. I'm going to pick the Bills to go to 3-0 and the Rams to drop to 2-1. and Then we have the Bears at 2-0 and and the Falcons at 0-2. And, and Chicago was only allowed one passing touchdown this season. It's tied for fewest in the National Football League. Again, they've only played the Detroit Lions and the New York Giants, so there's not really not really a great litmus test for them. Uh, and they've got the Atlanta Falcons, who are playing, irregardless of what happened at, at Dallas last week, they are playing great football. Woo, excuse me. Uh, Matt Ryan last year, I know I've said it already, has play, or played better football than he did in his MVP year. He's continuing that. He has Julio Jones. He has Calvin Ridley. This team is not one to be slept on. 
They're going to pick up their first win of the year against a very highly overrated Chicago Bears team. Packers fans, rejoice. You're going to have sole possession of the division once Chicago finally shows their true self on Sunday afternoon. I've got the Falcons. Then we have the Bengals at 0-2 and the Eagles at 0-2. And you know what? This game is kind of an enigma. It, this could be, really be Joe Burrow's stepping out point or stepping off point. Or this could be the game where Carson Wentz finally gets it back on track because neither of these two teams are very good. Um, and it's really just going to come down to which quarterback plays the best football. Honestly, I have to give it to Philadelphia. I don't see them dropping three in a row with that roster. I think they're just they're too good right now uh, from a talent perspective to to lose three games in a row, especially with the third game being to this Cincinnati Bengals team. Uh, if you can't beat Checkdown Charlie, then I just don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like Tampa Bay, they couldn't beat Checkdown Charlie either. and But not the same Checkdown Charlie, the different one, the one from New Orleans. So, I don't know. Th that tells you a lot about Tampa Bay, that they couldn't beat a Checkdown Charlie. Whatever. Um, but i got to pick the Eagles in this game. I just feel like Carson Wentz is going to be able to make plays that Joe Burrow simply cannot do. Because Burrow is not a good quarterback. But you've heard me say that for it quite some time. Then we have the Washington football team and the Cleveland Browns. I had to stretch out Cleveland Browns like that because I was in the midst of a yawn and I did not want it to leak out. Okay. And both the teams are 1-1. Washington has allowed 30-plus points in four of their last five regular season games, including to the New York football Giants. Yeah, remember when the Giants could score points? That was that was a long time ago. That was before a global pandemic. Um, yeah. The, the Washington football team, no bueno. They're not a good team. They showed that on Sunday. They are discombobulated. They are all over the place. Their defense is is not not no good. The offense is just patchwork. It really is because Dwayne Haskins is not a starter in this league. He's just not, and it's it's really unfortunate that people still think he's better than Daniel Jones because that is that is quite quite a lie yeah whatever we're only two weeks into the year and say whatever you want about each quarterback but there's no doubt in my mind and you're not going to change this this perspective there's no doubt that Dwayne Haskins is the worst quarterback in his division and Cleveland has finally put their shit together got their shit together Baker Mayfield came out and was slinging the ball all around the yard against Cincinnati on Thursday night they had a very impressive outing Odell Beckham got involved probably shut those trade rumors right up and as as much as I'd like to see Green Bay pick up Odell Beckham I, they're not going to unfortunately uh, because to me, if, if Green Bay did, that'd just be the icing on their Super Bowl. And uh, it'd be a little overkill at that point. But obviously, we're not going to live in fantasy land. Uh, but Cleveland, playing a team, the talent level of, Wa of Washington last week in Cincinnati, I can't come out here and say that they're going to lose. Because... They did pretty much just play the same exact team, only with a better quarterback. Uh, the better quarterback they're facing is, is this week. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm all over the place, but uh, we're going to power through it. So I'm picking Cleveland in the most roundabout way possible. I'm picking the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I just don't, I don't think the Washington football team is any good. They're not. And they will be beaten handedly. Handedly. By Cleveland. Then we have the Titans at 2-0 and the Vikings at 0-2. We're going to start trying to put real words together and make some of these predictions make sense now. 
Uh, the Vikings, Kirk Cousins has thrown seven interceptions in his last six games, dating back to 2019. Dude has not been playing good football at all. And I, I think those statistics might include the playoff game against uh, New Orleans and the playoff game against San Francisco. So that's not very good for Vikings fans to hear. And Kirk Cousins is not very good. And that team is not very good. They've got a lot of problems. A lot of problems. And I feel like they're going to be exploited by Tennessee. The Titans have just looked very, very good on both sides of the ball. Uh, last week, that game really went down to the wire with Jacksonville. But that's because I think Jacksonville is a better team than people think. That's why I picked them to win tonight. Uh, that's why I have them beating Miami. And I, I think that Tennessee is just one of those teams that you're not going to want to sleep on. And yeah, they're coming off an AFC divisional berth, or an AFC championship berth. But that doesn't mean that you should sleep on them. And it sounds kind of funny to say you shouldn't sleep on a team that was just in the AFC championship, but people do, and people are. And I don't, I don't quite understand it. Because you have, what, currently the third leading rusher in the NFL, Derrick Henry. You have Ryan Tannehill playing bonkers football at, as of the moment. And you have a defense that is above average. They're probably in the good territory. Uh, they can generate turnovers. They'll get the ball back for you when necessary. I, just, I like Tennessee. They're my pick. Then we have the Raiders and the Patriots. This game is going to be very, very interesting to me. The Raiders played beautiful game on Monday night, aside from the fumble. They played one of the best games I've seen anybody play in a long time. Like, their, their plan there for four quarters just looked solid. They never seemed to be phased by the, the gravity of the moment. Monday night against Drew Brees, one of the best Monday night football performers of all time. And they stepped right up and they just beat the hell out of the Saints. Regardless of what the score may indicate, the Saints really scored 14 points in what was essentially double garbage time. So, I'm having a hard time believing that the, uh, believing that the Saints are anything special. But I think the Raiders are. I think the Raiders have a lot to look forward to. But playing New England, playing that offense, is going to be such a challenge. I mean, Cam Newton accounted for 444 yards by himself against Seattle. That's uh, not a number to scoff at. <laughs> the Patriots have looked, even though they have been beaten, they look unbeatable. But they ran into one of the toughest teams in the entire NFC uh, in, in Seattle. So obviously, you know, something had to give, and it was a goal line play. But, I mean, New England, I want to pick them. I really do, but I think I'm going to pick the upset Raiders. I just, something something tells me that the the, the Raiders are going to have a, a, good, a good fun year. They're going to play some good football. They're going to win a lot of games. They're probably going to sneak into the playoffs. So I'm going to pick the Raiders in the upset. Then we have the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Unfortunately for Texans fans, I don't see you winning this game. Uh, the Steelers have won four of their last five against Houston. And the Texans are without the best player they've had in franchise history, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, oh, why are they without him? Because they traded him in the offseason for a bag of peanuts. And a 80-year-old, injury-hampered, prone David Johnson. So... I'm going to pick the Steelers uh, as much as I love Deshaun Watson. And I, and I do. People that know me know I love Deshaun Watson. I have his jersey. Uh, I'm going to buy his book. I followed him through college. He led my favorite college team to an, a national championship win in a, in, a national, in, a, in, a, in a second national championship that he was unable to win, but still got there. Impressive. Should have been a Heisman Trophy winner. Um... I love him, and I, I, and it made me, by proxy, enjoy watching the Texans play football. But as a realist, I can't. I can't do it. 
I got to pick Pittsburgh. Then the New York Jets and the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts, or excuse me, the Jets have scored fewer than 20 points in 12 games since 2019. Yikes. And the Colts have been a mixed bag thus far this season. It basically depends on which Phillip Rivers wants to show up. Because on any given Sunday, you can get either version of Phillip Rivers, the one that looks like the unbeatable god that nearly beat the Patriots in 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 the playoffs years ago, or he looks like the Phillip Rivers that is just as happy to throw a touchdown as he is to throw three interceptions. So I, I but I I can't pick the Jets in this game. I think they're just too bad. I think they are so bad that it is impossible for them to win this game. So I'm picking the Indianapolis Colts. Then. We have the Carolina Panthers and the Los Angeles Chargers. So, unfortunate situation in L.A. We all know by now with, with Tyrod Taylor. And I, I do feel feel quite bad for him. Uh, that's just unfortunate. It's all hell. But it did lead to Justin Herbert coming out and having the most impressive rookie quarterback performance we have seen this year. And nobody's talking about it. People are so ready to jump down Joe Burrow's jock for throwing checkdowns for two straight games that they have put absolutely no respect on Justin Herbert's game on Sunday. He played the defending Super Bowl champions and scored three touchdowns and threw for over 300 yards. And people aren't going nuts about this? This kid might be something. And uh, the Panthers have been just a, a nothing, a nothing team, a ghost of, of years past. And I think that continues. And I think the Chargers rolled to an easy 2-1. and one. So they're my pick. And then we have the Dallas Cowboys and the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson has thrown four or more passing touchdowns in each of his first two games. Give that man his MVP. Please. For the love of God, give that man an MVP. He's going to win it this year. It's between him and Aaron Rodgers. At the very least. He's going to win that damn trophy. He is too good Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the league right now. No doubt about it. And they're going to roll over the Cowboys. I've got the Seahawks going a 3-0. and oh. The Detroit Lions and the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray is averaging 79 rushing yards per game this season. That is the most among any quarterbacks in the league. And that just goes to show how dynamic... Kyler Murray is. I mean, this kid is unstoppable. He is so good. He is so talented. And he has such great talent around him that they have no choice other than to win football games. I, I mean, genuinely. When you pick Isaiah Simmons in the first round of the NFL draft, and he's not even your starting linebacker, that's when you know your team is deep AF. And talented AF. So I've got Arizona in this game. I just... <laughs> uh, the, the Lions... I know you guys didn't ask to play Arizona, but you're going to wish you could ask the mercy or ask for mercy come halftime because this game's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly quick. I've got Arizona. Then we have Tampa Bay and Denver. So Denver is 0-2. They should be 1-1. and Yeah, they, they should be 1-1. One one, but now they're without Drew Locke. For who knows how long. It's going to be up to Jeff Driscoll to lead them <laughs> against Tom Brady in the Super Team Buccaneers. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to pick Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Uh, just They are overbearing currently against Denver. Denver just, they don't have a chance, unfortunately. And through no fault of their own, Drew Locke got hurt. And that's that's terrible, but... 
without their without their leader, they're not going to be able to win this game. And then we have the Sunday night matchup, which you're watching me go through the motions with the 2-0 Green Bay Packers and the 1-1 New Orleans Saints. Green Bay has scored 40 points in each of their first two games, and New Orleans gave up almost 40. They gave up 31, I believe it was, or 34 on Monday night to the Saint or to the uh, to the Raiders. And now they've got Aaron Rodgers coming into town, and Aaron Rodgers has looked like a man on a mission so far this year. Dude is so pissed off that they drafted a quarterback in the first round. He is going to refuse to be terrible. And I, for one, if I'm any team in the NFC, I don't want to meet Aaron Rodgers. He's the last quarterback I want to run into in the playoffs. I, if, I want to see him in the NFC Championship and then be done with him. Like, if you if they end up getting the number two seed and you have to face the Packers in the first round of the playoffs, I mean, I'm sorry, whoever the eight seed is, but you're <laughs> you're gonna lose. Like, that's not a fight you're gonna get out of without without being broken in half. Uh, the Packers they look very very good. Them and the Seahawks are the best two teams right now in all of football. I mean, just from the the statistical test and the eye test, there are no better teams right now than Green Bay and Seattle. And New Orleans disappointed me in a big, major way on Monday night. It really showed, and and it really showed everybody in the world what I preached and what I screamed about two weeks ago when I when I opened the season talking about the snake oil merchant. Drew Brees led New Orleans Saints. And that is exactly what they are. They were slow on offense. They were uncoordinated. Drew Brees threw a disgusting interception. He had no intended target other than whatever Raider was in the area. Drew Brees is overrated. He is washed. He is washed up AF right now. He's got no freaking chance to beat Green Bay. And I don't think Michael Thomas is going to, going to be active for this game. And if he is, he's going to be hurt. So it's going to limit them. There's just, to me, an overwhelming talent disparity. And um, those two linebackers there in Green Bay are not going to allow Checkdown Charlie to get away with throwing 400 yards, none of those going for more than 20 in the air. So I've got Green Bay winning a big one on Sunday Night Football. And then on Monday night, <laughs> we have possibly the the best game so far this season. And they've got a lot to live up to. Um, oh, I did not notice that I had that I had uh, already won this game. Well, we'll just go back and watch some of these watch some of these highlights, I guess. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever done this. I've never completed Wow, this that's crazy to me. But whatever, we'll try to get through it best we can. So we've got the Chiefs and the Ravens on Monday night. Both of them are 2-0 in the matchup of the two reigning MVPs from last season, the season prior. Uh, that game is going to be one genuinely for the ages. There's just a lot, a, a lot of a lot of talent on this field on Monday night. It's Lamar Jackson. It's Russell. Whoa! It's Lamar Jackson. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's the the number three and number four best quarterbacks right now in football, behind Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rod, behind Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson in that order. I am off my game today. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'll try to be better next week. But uh, yeah, this game is going to be so ridiculously hard to predict for me. The Chiefs looked. They look good on opening night against Houston. They look terrible. IMO. They look terrible. Do I want to say terrible? Yeah, whatever. I'll say it. I don't think they look good at all on Sunday. I think they looked very bad, at least by their standards, to the Chargers. They they nearly they should have they should have lost. Let's be real. And uh Baltimore has looked has looked good. They haven't looked quite like themselves, but they have certainly looked like 
one of the better teams in their division. So, oh, it's just so hard for me to predict just exactly what's going to happen in this game. I, I want to say that I can give you a prediction on who's going to win. <laughs> but uh, I just, I can't really. Oh, man, this is so hard. <laughs> this is ridiculously difficult. Um, who do I want to pick? I'll pick Baltimore. I don't know. I don't know what anybody else is thinking, what the general consensus is through the population about Monday night's affair, but I'm thinking I'm thinking Lamar Jackson, Big Trust. I'm thinking it's going to be a, a Baltimore Ravens kind of game. And that's not to say, like, that the Chiefs are bad or anything like that. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It might sound like I don't know what I'm talking about right now. But that's just because of how ridiculous this game is, is going to be. And how hard it is to predict, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's Baltimore for me. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have a better interpretation of who's going to win this game on Monday night? Because I certainly have no clue. But, uh, yeah. This one was this one was rough to get through. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I, I tried. I don't know. I was just off my game today. But uh, we'll, we'll get back to it next week. And, um, and, yeah. So, everybody, as I've been telling you, stay safe. Wear a mask. Do all that good stuff. Uh, enjoy football. Have have a great time with friends, family. Maintain your social distance. Uh, punt a baby off a bridge. For no other reason other than I told you to. But, um, yeah. I'll catch you guys in week, <laughs> in week four.